From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Hydrogen-powered vehicles and plants of the future will require hydrogen fuel, which is made using an electrolyzer. As South Africa looks to introduce hydrogen-powered engines, the need for local hydrogen production will also become important. Crema Media's Donna Slater recently visited Randburg-based Hydrox Holdings. With its locally developed advanced alkaline electrolyzer, the company is looking to secure its place in the industry by tweaking its technology and offering units to meet domestic demand for hydrogen. Hydrox Holdings lead process engineer Jason Cuomo speaks to Crema Media's Donna Slater about these developments. What you're looking at is Hydrox Holdings advanced alkaline electrolyzer. The main aim is to produce hydrogen and oxygen gas safely and at high purity from the device. We have chosen to go the alkaline route because it makes use of simple materials. Simple materials means that it's lower cost to actually produce the systems. Um, this is all in the aim of producing electrolyzer that results in low cost hydrogen production. Um, one of the reasons why we've gone ahead and developed what we term an advanced alkaline electrolyzer is because it makes use of advanced catalysts, so we get extremely high performance. And then second to that, we have a zero gap philosophy on the electrolyzer. Essentially what that means is there's an important component in the electrolyzer called a membrane. That membrane under fluctuating loads vibrates and that actually results in the degradation of the membrane. So in our zero gap approach, we support the membrane throughout, which means that we can run off intermittent loads. So that is associated with solar and wind electricity profiles. So Hydrox Holdings has been developing electrolyzers for eight years now, but we have been working on two systems. The, the first systems which we started eight years ago was developing a system that doesn't make use of a membrane. And this is to alleviate some of the problems that we just discussed earlier, which is not having a component that degrades in the system, but also allows the system to target different modes of operation, such as higher temperature, higher pressures, using different electrolytes. So that technology is unique and novel. No one else is doing that in the world. And it has taken ages to develop to the point that we've done a proof of concept for Shell, and we're very successful in doing that. But now we want to take that system to higher temperature operation, which is a bit more of a difficult task to complete. Second to that, what you see at the back here, the advanced alkaline electrolyzer has been in development for two years now. It is based on a tried and trusted production method, so there's a bit of less R&D that needs to go into it. However, we've put in some development work into it, trying to reduce the expense of material use inside the system and allowing it to run off intermittent loads a bit better. So that's where our technical development has been focused, and that's been, as I say, for about two years now. Purity is a very important thing, mainly because of safety. So hydrogen is a very explosive gas. It's very energy dense. It has 39.4 kilowatt hours per, um, per kg. So a lot of energy packed into a kilogram of hydrogen, you don't want that to explode. So outside of the high explosive limit, you can then have hydrogen void from oxygen being operated in a safe manner. So then you can handle 99% purity hydrogen in a safe manner with no risk of exploding without it being exposed to, exposed to oxygen. So from points of safety, that is very important. And then second of all, when you're looking to run a fuel cell, and a fuel cell is what takes the hydrogen and oxygen into the system and produces your electricity. So the fuel cell is what's going to run back our power systems and it's what's going to run your trucks and cars in the future. Um, in order to run those systems, you need a purity of 99.999% hydrogen. So you have to take out all the oxygen and all the water vapor that's contained in it. So in terms of purity, as I say, safety, and second of all, you need an extremely high purity to run your fuel cell. We want to go commercial with the system that you see here. So the next two to three years is looking to scale up a system, put it in an operating environment such as a mine, sugar industry, maybe a backup power system for a solar plant or wind farm. That's where we intend to take this system. Of course, we don't intend to stop here with our development work. There's a lot that we can do to improve performance and improve costs, and that's looking at implementing different catalysts, thinner membrane devices, all of which will work to improve efficiency and improve costs. So it's both commercialization, and then from this point onwards, pretty much for the existence of a technology, it's always working to improve it. The challenges along the way is pretty much the supply chain for the components. As uh, our CEO said, about 70% of the system is sourced locally. That's a lot of your instrumentation, your tanks, your piping, your pumps, etc. But some of the core components, such as the membrane materials, the catalyst, the electrode, and some other components then the device, they come from overseas. So it has been challenging to, to not only source these components, but work with these suppliers to incorporate them successfully into our electrolyzer. 
um, what we need to work on is trying to get these components and this kind of research being done in the local landscape so we can actively work with these individuals. Um, working abroad has been made, well, pretty much one of our challenges that we need to work through. And then second of all, funding is always a problem. It is very expensive to build these systems. We are using some sophisticated instrumentation and materials that are nickel and platinum based, so they do come at as a cost, so funding has always been a challenge. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.